Right. Hey folks, it's Faz here from Faz Lifts. Today I'm going to go over 10 tips for the older lifter. Or if you're like me, you're not that old, but you've been under the iron for a long time, check this out. Now, before we get into that, um, thanks for tuning into my channel. Uh, if you've got any questions or comments, pop them down below and uh, I'll be looking forward to hearing from you. So let's get into this. Now, I had this question come in from Daniel Torks Torkelson, sorry, <laughs> Daniel Torkelson, and he was talking about my full body routine video, which I'll go ahead and link above. Um, essentially, his question is, any advice for older people? So I think that's a good enough question. So let's check it out. All right, so I've written down about 10 guidelines here, and let's start to go over them. So firstly, with guidelines for the older lifter, it's not just the obvious things that change as you get older. So first thing I would say is set and rep schemes need to be a little bit different. Now, whereas when I was younger, I would tend to do every set as maximal or almost maximal. So my set and reps might look like the bottom example there. 100 kilos for 14, pretty much all out, then eight and then six. My reps would drop as I would fatigue from each subsequent rep, from each subsequent set. However, nowadays, what I prefer to do is more flat set and rep schemes. So I might do 100 kilos for 10, 10, 10. The 10, I'm purposely holding myself back. And the next 10, holding myself back, aiming to go to failure or close to failure on the final set. It's more the totality of the training that I'm relying on rather than each individual set. So whereas in the bottom example, what I might do when I'm younger, I'm going all out or near all out on every set. That's going to give me a much greater overall stimulus, but it means that three times during an exercise, I'm taking my body to the point where it's going to failure or close to failure, and that can be very difficult to recover from, and it can potentially expose you to a little bit more injury as well. So I prefer focusing on sub-maximal sets, at least until the last set. Also, the advantage of that is you can really hone in on form on those first couple of sets because they're not maximal. You're not that interested in getting the maximum number of reps. All you're really interested in is making sure that you have pristine form for a set of reps which you know you can handle. So that's the first one. Now, <laughs> next one is don't baby yourself. You're old, you're not dead. Now, I'm not suggesting Daniel's doing this, but... The idea is you want to keep your body strong. This goes a long way towards reducing chronic pain, um, especially um, your back. Train your back hard for spinal and erector health. There seems to be this misconception that if you're not training your, uh, your back, you're somehow saving it for, um, you know, for, for life. But the reality is if you don't train an area, it's going to get weaker. And there's somebody who regularly posts or uh, who messages me whenever I post a training information. She's actually an old school friend of mine who says, oh, God, whenever you post something to your back, it, it makes me wince. I'm like, don't you realize like the reason I don't have back pain is because I've been training it hard for the last 22 years. It's not like this stuff is going to cause me back pain. It's actually making sure I can live life pain free. And there seems to be a misunderstanding with the general public that if you go into the gym and you lift heavy deadlifts and squats with great form, you're going to hurt your back or you're going to somehow wear it out. It's not true. It keeps you strong. So next thing is use the barbell sparingly. Now, I would say with this, potentially lower the use of squats, deadlifts, bench presses, and the barbell in general. The barbell can be quite a stressful tool and I tend to think that for the majority of the time, most machines and dumbbells tend to be a better use of your time, allow your body to move around in a freer way and expose you to less chance of injury. Now, the only time that I would use squats, deadlifts and bench presses these days is perhaps if I have them later on in the routine. Like right now, we're uh, roughly end of May and I can tell you my routine for my quads involves leg extension first, then leg press, and then finally squats. So I do still do squats, but I do them far later in the routine. And that means the weight I use is a little bit lower. So, and I only use it for one exercise out of that whole quad day. So yeah, I use the barbell sparingly. Next up, okay, this is a bit of a tricky one, deloads. And this is kind of what I meant at the beginning when I said the advice is not always as obvious as it seems. Now, firstly, here's the obvious part, deload frequently. Well, everyone is going to tell you that. Everyone's going to tell you, take your deloads, reduce your fatigue, don't put yourself to injury. That's great. But the thing is, if you take an entire week off, the older you get, the worse it is for your health. You should still do something on those off weeks for glucose disposal and maintenance 
of health and cardiovascular capability. So I often tell people to engage in a different sport, like play some table tennis, right? <laughs> Go and play some table tennis, play some golf, play some regular tennis. Go for a jog a couple of times that week, you know? Do something different. Take a few cardio classes at the gym. Just take it easy, but stay active. So whereas a younger guy, he might just take a deload and just take that week entirely off, rest, relax on the couch. The older you get, the quicker you're going to detrain and the worse you're going to feel if you actually take time off. You need to be able to dispose of that glucose that you're eating during the course of the week. Stay in tune with, with general health. You got to move it <laughs> or you're going to lose it. So yeah, deloads are a tricky one. They're not as obvious as you might think. Take the time off, but make sure you're doing something. Next thing is for your gym performance, still prioritize progression. Aim for progressive sets. That is the be all and end all. Like this will ensure you're working hard, you know? So if you're still aiming to add a little bit of weight every session, you're still progressing, you're still going to be ensuring that you're working hard. Sure, your performance might be down from 10 years ago, 20 years ago. I mean, yeah, mine is as well, right? But if you're still improving in that moment, then things are still going well. Next, number six, form is everything. Uh, <laughs> this is a funny one. It never fails to surprise me just how bad people can lift when they're younger and get away with it. I mean, a cursory glance on Instagram will, will tell you this. You go, and look, you go and sign up to one of the meme pages on, um, on Instagram, and I'll show you countless examples of young guys just abusing deadlifts and walking away absolutely fine. <laughs> and I probably did the same thing when I was younger as well, but your ability to get away with dumb stuff is lower and lower over time. So don't do that the older you get. All right, the next thing, rep control and speed. All right, so in general, control should be emphasized, okay? Now this might involve reducing the rep speed. It might, it might not but control should be emphasized. That's all I'll say. You might still be lifting relatively fast, but you want to be in control of your work every single time you lift. Number eight is keep the volume on the moderate to higher side. Now, this is for a couple of reasons. One, it allows you to have that built-in buffer. So you're not just going for all out maximum sets in a low rep system. You're not going for that whole train by JP Dorian Yates style of approach. Uh, where it's like a high intensity Mike Mentor type of thing. Keep the volume on the moderate to higher side and just allow the cumulative fatigue to work your muscles. Um, I would say, you know, somewhere between 12 plus, you know, once you're getting down to that eight set range per week, you may just be putting a, you may just be sacrificing volume just to put more weight on the bar uh, or on the, on the dumbbell or machine. I would caution against that. Do a little bit more work, Take a little bit less rest between those sets and allow that cumulative fatigue to work the muscles. All right, next thing, do your damn cardio. All right, now, whether it's 10 to 20 minutes at the end of every session, just get it done. It's great for heart health. Um, it's excellent for glucose disposal. And also it's good for the chronic pain prevention. Keep active, stay active. Me personally, I make sure I get my 10K steps per day. It's still a great tool. It's still a great way to do things and I still get my training sessions in per week. And finally, just to end with this, consider the use, the judicious use of some supplements. My advice is get your blood work done regularly. When I hit 30, I went to a doctor and said, look, doc, I want to get my blood work done every year. And he's like, why? <laughs> and this is a, um, a NHS that we have in the UK. So it's uh, public health care. And so I said, yeah, I want my blood work done because I'm 30 and uh, I figure I want to take care of my health. He goes, okay, that's fine. So every year now I go to the doctor. I says, hey, time for my blood work. And he goes, okay, cool. Sends me out to the hospital. I get my blood work done and I just make sure everything's okay. The first time that I did it, I had an issue with vitamin D and a vitamin B12 deficiency. Now I wouldn't have known that if I hadn't got the blood work done. And if I had just supplemented vitamin D anyway, and I didn't have a deficiency, that was to cause more problems in other areas. Look up vitamin D um, overdose, like it's not great either. So base your supplementation on your blood work. Get your blood work done, the older you are. Just check it out. Make sure you know what's going on in your body and you can supplement accordingly. You don't want to ignore it, but you also don't want to just shotgun random supplements because <laughs> some person on Instagram said to you, this is going to give you more energy or whatever, right? supplement what you need and no more. All right, folks, hopefully that was useful. Um, I enjoyed making that. Thank you for the question, Daniel. Um, I would really appreciate your subscribes, likes, and shares. That helps me out a lot. 
And if you've got any comments or questions, please pop them down below. All right, folks, 